Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,483. Hey, in this video, we have a great lookup problem. How do we look up the latest product price based on a date? Now, in this video, we'll see how to use the lookup function in an array formula to solve this problem. Now, here's the fundamental problem. We have a lookup table. And here's the product name, but notice ABC is listed three times with different prices posted based on different dates. So every date between 1-1, 2018, up to but not including 3-1 should be $10. Everything March 1st or later should be 12, and everything after 7-15 should be 9. Here's our transaction table. That means when we're looking up this product, we also have to consider the date. So it's as if we have two separate lookup conditions. These transactions need a price of 10, these need 12, and these need 9. Now there's one other problem here that makes this lookup problem particularly difficult. Yes, we need to look up two different items. So for these two items, we need to find this record and get that price. But notice, we can find an exact match ABC compared to this, but what in the world are we going to do with this? That date cannot directly be matched up to 1-1-2018. Now, the amazing thing about this problem here is that there's all sorts of amazing solutions to solve this problem. And over the next five Excel magic tricks, we will learn so many amazing formula tricks. Now, before we go look at our first example, one other factor here is this table is a single table. And although we can sort the columns, for all of our examples, we're going to keep this table together. Now, really, the easiest solution is to break apart so that each product has its own table. And just a few weeks ago, I did a great video about looking up to different tables using switch function or indirect. But for all of these examples, the table is going to stay together. So now let's go over to 148387 and look at our first example. Here's our lookup table. Here's our transactional data set. And our goal is to get the correct price based on date. Now, for this solution, we're actually going to require that the effective date column be sorted from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to click in a single cell, right click, sort oldest to newest. And we're going to assume that this table works that way, right? These two products had a price on 1-1. One, one. The next two products had a price on 3-3. Three, three. And then as the dates went on, we added the later dates. Now, if you wanted to, you could convert this to an Excel table. And then as you automatically add new records, the formula will see those. Now, of course, you'd have to put the table off to the side so it had room to expand. But we're not going to use an Excel table here just to make it easier to understand how we construct the formula. Now, we're going to start off by making it an array operation. We're going to ask of the product column, and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, are any of you equal to the product? Now, what makes this an array calculation or an array operation? Well, anytime you have an operator, whether it's a comparative operator like equal sign or multiplying or dividing like a math operator, if you have one item on each side, it's just a normal calculation. But we don't. We have one item there, but many items there. That makes this an array calculation or an array operation. And we'll prove that to ourselves, close parentheses. With my cursor at the end, I'm going to use the evaluation key F9. Notice it delivers a resultant array. That entire column got asked the question, are you equal to ABC? We got a true, true, and a true. Three trues, the rest are falses. Now, Control-Z, that wouldn't work for us here because if we use that resultant array to pick out prices, it would pick out all the prices for ABC. And that's not what we want, so we're going to have to further refine this 
array calculation. Now I'm going to multiply open parentheses. And now we want to ask a question of the effective date column, because we need to isolate it. Right here, this ABC needs only the dates in this column that are less than or equal to that particular date. Now I need to hit F4 to lock it and ask the question, how many of you are less than or equal to whatever the date is for this transaction? Notice for this transaction, the only two dates here that are less than or equal to 226, 2018 are these two. So close parentheses. If we were to highlight just this second array operation and hit the F9 key, now we get an array of trues and falses that picks out just the two dates that meet that condition. Now I'm going to Control Z, and now I want to evaluate everything here. And I want to point out a couple of things. Notice that's one array operation. That's a second array operation. And that's a third array operation. Now this is an array of trues and falses, and so is this. Anytime we do a math operator on trues and falses, it'll convert them to ones and zeros. Not only that, but only when there's a true in the first one and a true exactly in the same place in the second one will we get a resulting one. False times false, true times false, all of those will be zero. So cursor at the end, F9 to evaluate. That is beautiful. Now we have picked out exactly the one record that has the price. Now Control Z. Let's enter this and copy this down, because we'll see a problem. Copy it down. Let's come down to the record that has 930, because ABC 930, that should be picking out that $9. Click in the cell, F2 to put it in edit mode, F9 to evaluate it. Oh, wait a second. Now I have a resultant array of ones and zeros, but I have one, two, three ones. That won't help me directly, because those ones would pick out all of the ABCs. Well, guess what? I only want the last one. That's why we had to sort this column from smallest to biggest. Well, guess what? I can throw that array into a lookup function that does approximate match lookup. And if the lookup value were something bigger than any number in the lookup column, approximate match lookup functions are programmed to always take the last one. Well, we can easily do that since we're only going to ever get zeros and ones. If I give it a big lookup value of the number 2, it'll always get the last one. Now there's another problem. I'm going to click Escape and come down here to CDE, F2, F9. Notice the 1 is right there, but there's a bunch of zeros. Guess what? Approximate match lookup will think of 0 and 1 as numbers, so it'll just keep going along until it gets the last one. So actually, the array of zeros and 1s will not work. We're actually going to have to filter out the zeros and only keep the 1s. Now I'm going to hit Escape here. Escape always reverts back to whatever the formula was in the cell before I put it in edit mode. Come to the top, F2, and I want to take all of that and put it in the denominator. So I'm going to say 1 divided by, and I have to force that multiplying to happen before that division. So open parentheses, close parentheses. Now if I F9, beautiful. I have filtered out the zeros with divide by 0. Control Z, Control Enter. Let's copy it down. Double click and send it down. Go down to this 930 ABC, F2, F9. And there it is. Now our approximate match with a big number to always get the last number will work. 2 will totally not be bothered by the divide by 0, and it will find the last one. Escape right here on CDE, F2, F9. Since there's only one, 2 as a big lookup value will find the last one. And boom, that will get us our price. Escape. Now, F2 at the top. We could put this in the match function and then use 2 as the lookup value. And match would tell us the relative position. So for the CDE, it would say the relative position 2. And then in this price range here, that would be the second position. So it would get 15. 
for CDE. But I don't want to use match and index because the match function will require control shift enter because of this array operation. And guess what? There's a magic function called lookup. Now we're going to use the lookup function. This is actually historically the very first lookup function that ever existed back in VisiCalc, long before VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. And lookup does a bunch of magic things for us. The first thing it will do is it will handle array operations without Control-Shift-Enter. The second thing is, remember, we need a lookup value of 2, comma. Well, we can give it a lookup value. And then without using match, lookup is programmed to take that value and find it within the lookup vector. And we can come to the end, comma, and give it a third range of values that we actually want to try and go get and bring back to the cell. So for result vector, I'm going to highlight price, F4 to lock it, close parentheses. Now, a couple things about lookup. It only does approximate match lookup, not exact match lookup, and that's what we want. It definitely can handle our array operation without Control-Shift-Enter, and it has three arguments. Lookup value, range to find a match in, which delivers the relative position, to then pick out the correct value in result vector. And the fourth thing it will do is the divide by zero errors will not bother the lookup function at all. It's one of the few functions that are not bothered when we have an array operation filled with errors. So lookup, this amazing lookup function will do our approximate match lookup, not require Control-Shift-Enter, has the three arguments so we don't have to use index and match, and will not be bothered by errors. So that's our amazing formula. Control-Enter, double-click and send it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2. I'm verifying that all the cell references are working. Escape. Now, I love this formula, F2, because, yeah, it's the oldest lookup function ever. It can handle array operations without any special keystroke. But this formula will require that this column is sorted, which is, in general, a safe assumption. If I were to come up here and right click, sort, Largest to smallest, uh-oh, then the formula is not working. That is returning the wrong price. Control-Z to undo that sort. All right, F2. So in this video, we saw how to use lookup and an array operation to look up the correct price in our lookup table based on two lookup items, the product and the order date. Now, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel this one, including our next video, Excel Magic 1484. We'll see how to sort both the product column and the effective date column, and then use offset and VLOOKUP function. All right, we'll see you next video.